Hey, this is Brooks with Character Design Forge. I think we've all been there before where our sketch that we start with looks really great. And as you move forward, you add ink to it, you render it, you add color, try to realize it more. Uh, it just becomes worse and worse. And you look back at the original sketch and go like, what happened? Uh, I have a few solutions to this, and I think this is one of the rare occasions where the solution is just as much technique-based as it is mindset-based and changing your mindset a little bit. So the first reason for this is the only one that isn't something that you can improve on, and instead it's just a little bit more about the nature of sketches. Um, sketches are rough, and that kind of lends to their appeal. Uh, they're very like stream of consciousness, and it's very easy for a sketch to look effortless and like it took no time at all. Whereas as soon as you start finishing a piece of artwork, it's obvious that it took more time and you were really trying to perfect uh, the way that it turns out. Another reason, which is something that you can improve on though, is the fact that sketches allow you to make many lines in one place that suggest the actual line of something, if that makes sense. So with sketching, you could lay down a bunch of rough lines, maybe on like a curve, um, and those sort of average out to be the right line. And maybe visually it just looks like that's, that's about right. Uh, but as soon as you start to lay down the ink or you render it, you're making a very firm decision. And maybe you actually end up inking the wrong line in that situation. Those two reasons pale in comparison though to our next two reasons, which are faithfulness and sterilization. So let's hit these one at a time. So your finished art may not look as good as the sketch because you weren't being faithful enough to the sketch. And I think we've all done this where maybe we aren't taking enough time when we're going back over our original sketch and we're making our ink lines or rendering just approximately the same as the sketch. And when you do that, you tend to lose a lot of visual information. And I think sometimes what we do is we go back over the sketch and we think that we're being smart by smoothing out a section of the sketch, but what we're actually doing is deleting some visual information. Now the solution here is really to just take your time and pay attention to the original sketch. You shouldn't be inking over your sketch layer at the same speed that you were sketching. It just doesn't work that way. The other issue that's present here though uh, is sterilization. So let's just move on into sterilization because a huge part of this is mindset. So I'm hoping that even if you've never used an old black and white copy machine, you're aware of how they work. Now a copy machine doesn't clone a document or make a one-to-one -one replicant. You can almost always tell uh, which one is the original and which one's the copy. And that's because the copy machine generally makes an inferior version of the original. Uh, the quality of the ink uh, or the look of the image just isn't the same. Um, usually there's little pieces of dust or negative space on the copy machine that uh, renders itself as these little black dots on the copy. So you can almost always tell. Usually the copy is good enough for your purposes. Um, but here I wanted to talk about the idea of taking out the copy, putting that on the copy machine, copying that and keep doing that the further and further away that you get from the original, uh, the worse quality it's going to be, the more little black spots there's going to be. So why am I talking about copy machines? Well, it's because we have this tendency and I think it's more prevalent in digital art just because it's easier to do this, uh, where we make our original, our original sketch, and we want it to look better. We want to clean it up. We want it to end up looking more professional. And so we maybe lower the opacity of the original and start drawing over that. And then we hide the original completely and we just have this second version. And now we start drawing over that because we just want to make it perfect. We want to make it great. And I think it's because we're afraid. We want things to look good and professional. But what we're actually doing is removing so much of the original information and personality that we are sterilizing our artwork. I think mentally, especially newer artists, tend to associate clean art with good art. Um, but the problem is here that you're removing so much from that original. Um, that roughness and authenticity, the personality of uh, how you drew the original, and really its imperfections actually all endear people to the work, and it's actually a good thing. So the solution to this is, first of all, don't do that where you're stacking new layers uh, over top your original and getting rid of uh, all of the personality and a lot of the visual information as you do that. Instead, really take your time, again, being faithful to it as you ink or render over your sketch. Or here's another solution which I think 
not enough people necessarily consider, which is not getting rid of your original sketch at all. Instead, um, maybe get rid of any little stray marks on it or roughness, uh, maybe erase away the construction lines on it and actually use the original sketch in your final work somehow, either by adding some color or something like that. Uh, that's what I've tended to do recently and I think it results in a much better final product because a lot of that personality and I think authenticity is really still there. I think it's good, even if you just do it for a while, to think about your artistic process not as first I sketch, then I ink, then I color, then I shade. Really think about how much can I retain my original idea as I do this, instead of just uh, treating it as comic artists who one person does this, the sketch and then they hand it off and you're sort of mentally handing it off to yourself as the inker later on because so much gets lost in translation. Another side note, I think we have this tendency where if something isn't working, we want to draw over part of our work and iterate on it that way. I would highly suggest that if you're going to make an iteration, either uh, erase the part that isn't working on this version of the drawing or simply start a new one to the side of it. Uh, I think, again, this is a situation of we draw over the original, we take certain pieces of visual information for granted in the original, and then we hide the original, so it's gone. All of this will take some time and practice, but I think that you really can eventually rid yourself of this sketch problem. Really the important thing to keep in mind here is your mindset. Don't be so anxious about creating clean and professional looking artwork that it just ends up looking lifeless. That's it for me today. I'm making new videos every week at Character Design Forge. Subscribing on YouTube, if you haven't already, is a good way to know when new videos are made available. Uh, if you aren't already following me on Instagram, that's instagram.com slash bageldenizen or at bageldenizen. Um, I'm actually starting a new project in August that's pretty exciting, and I definitely want you guys to be there to see it. If this or any of my videos have been educational or entertaining to you, please consider backing me on Patreon at patreon.com slash bageldenizen. Uh, there I have lesson booster packs, which are like distilled versions of these videos in a sort of tangible form that you can print out, you can review, you can do little worksheet things that can help you practice and improve your skills. Um, also there you can get high resolution versions of my artwork, you can download and check those out. Uh, you also get early access to our show Character Select, which uh, is a lot of fun. We just make up the most ridiculous, like competitive multiplayer game character that we can. Um, and then afterwards we do a backstory and illustration of that. My course Learn Character Design is a comprehensive character design curriculum. Head over to learncharacterdesign.com to learn more about that. It's over 10 hours of video learning. Uh, it's really helpful for anyone who's looking to level up their character design skills, but it even starts out in a place where someone who doesn't know how to draw can get to a place where they're confident in their ability and start creating characters of their own. Thank you for watching and have fun creating.